Follow my key profession on the key possession. I'm OD aggressive when I run the rock. See me flexing in the winning section. If they press a bombing on them off the top, slump a hater, leave them in the field. Or I'm in the kitchen whipping up a dot. Took it from the bottom to the top. Certified man and money shot. Toss a bullet, hit you in the chest, and send a burn across your face from mind to slot. Please don't test them, I bring heat and brush it. Have my hitter brush, you move you off the spot. Slump a hater, leave them in the field. Or I'm in the kitchen whipping up a dot. Took it from the bottom to the top. Certified man and money shot. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your college football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. This is Man Money Shot. Slimming out the college cheese as always. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys an update on a defense that I first showed you guys a glimpse of last week in a playoff game. This is the following game, and I started using that defense exclusively. Now, this is the only defensive play that I'm calling, and it's absolutely lights out. I'm going to show you guys more about that defense in a minute, but before before I do, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comments section. I'm still using the Georgia Bulldogs because I just updated my offensive and defensive ebook. So I'm going to show you guys a new offense. But as always, if you guys want more help or more money plays, you can download these and any of my ebooks instantly simply clicking links in the description or the top pinned comment. I started this game out on offense. And if you were following my BYU series last couple of weeks, I started using the spread offense a lot. And I found that Georgia has their own gun spread wide flex formation, which is very similar and has a lot of the same plays. But they also have these really cool wide receiver screens that I think make this offense really fun to use. And I do plan on making a video about this offense. So if you guys want to see more from this series, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. I'm going to probably put that out next week. One of the best things about the spread offense is that usually allows for a lot of run room inside, as you can see on the next play. The entire defense is spread out, so I just hit him with an inside zone. Then on the next play, I see he's pressing what looks like a man coverage. So at times I see that, I'm just going to switch over to this play here because this zig route is going to be huge to the wide side of the field as we almost got a really big play out of that, but at least we got the first down. I go to that wide receiver screen on the next play, and you can see how against pretty much any zone coverage, this here can be something that can give your opponent a lot of headaches. As my real goal is just to make sure that he's paying attention to that before I switch over to a double drags concept on the next play, and we hit the tight end coming over the middle for the biggest play of the drive. He continues to come out in man coverage, so I switch back to the Y sail play as this sail route to the tight end is an instant man beater every single time before we call a hurry up and switch over to this play here because this running back is super cheesy as it gets opening against just about any defense in the game. The defense I'm going to show you guys once again today is out of the 3-3-5 mint or the 3-3 odd, but I'm not going to be using cover three maps like I typically have done pretty much the entire year. To me, cover three match is still one of the best defenses used in the entire game, but recently EA added a brand new updated version into the game in the last patch called the Cover Three Buzz Mabel. And in my opinion, this is like cover three match on steroids. In my last defensive video, I used cover three Mabel pretty much throughout the entire playoff game that I was playing before switching over to the Buzz Mabel, and I noticed a difference right away. I even showed you guys a difference in that video. So if you guys want to see a side-by-side -side comparison of how these coverages react, I'll have a link to that video in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video. In the update notes, they said that this defense is best for three wide receiver sets to one side like trips or bunch, but you can use this against every single offense in the game, and I find that it's just a superior defense when it comes to the programming as far as the matching principles are concerned. And I sold myself on this defense so much that it's the only defense I'm using now as I'm going to pick it every single play of this game. Now, since I'm running a matching style defense, there's going to be two coaching adjustments that are going to be very important. Number one, you want to have your auto flip on. And that's because this is a new defense, and I don't necessarily know how the matching principles work yet, as it's still pretty new to me. This is only the second game of me using this defense. You're also going to want to make sure that you don't set your zone drops, as that will override the matching principles and make this defense much worse. So leave your zone drops alone. Leave them at default. And the setup for this defense is super simple, as I only really have to set up my run fits. I don't really have to worry about the coverage. I don't want to mess with that. I think that the matching coverage is good on its own. So the only adjustments I'm going to make is to use this outside linebacker who's in a QB contain, spread the defensive line and linebackers, which is deep path to left and up and then deep path to the right and up, and bring this QB contain player over the middle. And it'll give me this look here that looks like a 3-3 stack defense. Now, those spread defensive ends should do a good job of outside containment when it comes to run plays. And if he runs up the middle, we have three linebackers here to shut that down. 
as these gaps may look inviting but you can see on the next play he doesn't get far as he only gets a couple of yards on the next play you can see how active these coverages are as pretty much every zone immediately sprints in a direction and takes an assignment on the very next play converging on players to the point where they're double teaming pretty much everybody across the board on the next play if you drop back to about an eight yard depth from the line of scrimmage a lot of times the offensive lineman's awareness won't be able to pick you up so it'll allow you to shoot these gaps unblocked as you can see on the next play we stopped for a fourth and four before he barely gets open to pick up the first down the next play and we get to see the first time that our safety 22 pope gets burnt on the play he tries around the next play and i step back for the exact same result as we stop him for no gain and even though there's not much pass rush as i'm only sending three guys these qb contains still do a really good job of getting pressure and getting sacks as you can see we get a sack on that play and then on the very next play this qb contains just splits the double team instantly for another sack whoa there mr diddy take that take that but of course he tries to go for a fourth and a mile because this is college football 25 and people play like idiots. No soup for you. And now I'm starting with the ball in the red zone as we get down to the four, but we can't punch it in from here as our run game gets stuffed on the next two plays. So we try to go for a QB sneak on fourth down. Surprise, motherfucker. But at least he's backed up against his own one yard line. On the next two plays, he runs the ball just to get some breathing room before he finds a weakness in this defense. And that's the fact that these three pass rushers don't really do a good job of containing these run lanes. He takes off up the middle and almost gets 40 yards on the next play. It also prefers to take away the deep routes first. So a lot of times the running back or short routes can get open underneath. As he goes to the running back on the next two plays to get the third and three before taking off up the middle once again for another big run to get in a field goal range. When your opponent starts doing this all you really have to do is put the user that you were using on a qb spy and then once the quarterback leaves the pocket just pushing the right stick and you can see right here we got this guy hemmed in the other weakness is personnel as this seam flat will match this receiver and essentially treat it like a man coverage but the safety and coverage here is an 88 speed 78 overall player going against one of the best receivers in the entire game and that's a matchup i'm going to lose every single time and to make things worse, he only left me about 9 seconds in the half, so now he gets ball back to start the second half as well. But our defense is still playing lights out as we get into a fourth down right away, and I don't know how that guy just held onto the ball. He goes empty backfield a few plays later, so I know he's going to try to run with the quarterback. So I put my QB spy out there, but I push the stick in a little bit too early, and he gets sucked in by a block as he gets another big run. But once he gets close to field goal range, we start shutting down the run once again, as he tries to get it all in the very next play. How about new? Before he tries to force it in a tight window on third and nine. Gotcha, bitch. As I click on for the user pick and we're going the other way. He could go all the way. And now this defense is firing on all cylinders as on the next play, we almost get a sack with the QB contained once again before we sniff out a screenplay with our user. And he tries to threaten deep on the next play before trying to throw a corner out out of desperation. Got he. And we probably should have just batted that down for better field position. As all we really need now is to get in the fourth quarter and kick a field goal at the very least. But instead we score a couple plays later. And that should be game because he tries to take a kick return back on the next play. Only gets stopped at the 8 yard line before our QB contained splits again to get a sack. Which almost was a safety. Bullshit. Before he goes right at Pope again. <laughs> As I swear, I didn't know this was happening until I watched the game when I was editing it. Yeah. But I promise you, every game I've played since, I've made sure that this guy is nowhere near the field. God damn it! He tries to go for two and hit the running back in the flat once again, but these guys have been doing a pretty good job of taking away the flat since the first drive. So now all I really gotta do is kill clock, but when I see him press his cornerbacks on the next play, I try to take off the top. What? And that play really comes back to haunt us as a few plays later, I try to hit a screen play, but I can't see the outside cornerback on the camera. Oh, there he is. Fuck! 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 Oh! And this time when he goes for two, he just runs it in as he realizes he can't really pass against his defense. And now it's a tie ball game with a minute and 44 seconds left, so I gotta stop messing around. So we gotta go down the field, keep the ball the entire time, and score with no time left on the clock, as we're gonna start running the ball a little bit more. As we run the next three plays to basically get in the field goal range. Oh, and this game is absolutely screwing me right now. 
Okay, never mind. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, that's right. We're going down the field here as we probably could have scored on this play, and he was probably trying to let me. As we're trying to end the game with ball in hand here, so we go down with the running back, but that's before Carson Beck tries to crowd surf over the center to score. Where was all that effort on the last time I tried this play? And now it all comes down to my defense. He's got 40 seconds left and a timeout, so I'm definitely covering deep because, like I said, I had no idea why that receiver was getting open for those huge plays. So every time we see three wide receivers, we're covering that side of the field deep before he tries to chuck it up to Abukam one more time but that's not Pope in coverage bro as we come down with the interception and my opponent's leaving with a rage quit see ya so that's that's the video if you guys want to see more videos like this including the championship game whether I win or lose next week make sure to be a subscriber hit like button let me know in the comment section other than that if you guys want to see the first video I made comparing these two match coverages to see what the real difference is I'll have that popping up on the screen so just click the links and until next time thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below